Don't you go snooping around those floorboards. I don't know what that means, Uncle Nathaniel. Back in 09, I picked up a hitchhiker, fine little man, young, fresh <laughs> face. What? Brought, and brought him back to the house, had a few drinks, asked him where he's gone. Jeffrey Dahmer's. Things got a little heated. He came on to me, tried to give me a kiss. I say, ain't like that. I held him down. I was only defending myself, Hesson. Swear I didn't mean to do it. Okay. I took a knife to him, shot what? myself. Watched him bleed out on the floor there. I never forget the look in that <laughs> boy's face as he stared me down from the floor. So the light faded from his eyes and I I knew I would never be the same after that one. I never even caught his name when I put him out. Cut him up in little pieces in a trash bag and put him under the house. Uh, been a couple of wolves come by, try to dig up the remains, but I had to rush up, get him down, trap him down. Put him back in there a little deeper now. <laughs> One thing I I never did say to that boy is that I liked it. I did like it. Should have fought him. Shouldn't have fought him. <clears throat> uh, how my life would have been different if I would have accepted that kiss and uh, well, I better not. I better lay off the eggnog for the evening, getting a little. Yeah, I tracked. Yeah, maybe. But I did preserve his penis. All right. What? Okay. All right. An amazing job. It's time for bed, Uncle Nathaniel. And that's bestiality. Although I do like bestiality at times. So, <laughs> so us boys used to go out. There was one cow named Sally. We used to line up, take a turn, run the train on dear Sally. She's a good old steer boy. Good old Sue. We tell you she was real G-R-H-M-B-A. tight too for her cattle. You don't expect them to be nice and tight because they're so big and heavy. But I'll tell you, man, she was good. She was tight. We'd ride, we'd, we'd line up, and I'd just, bla- I'd finish, boy, because, you know, she ain't getting pregnant or nothing. She ain't got no STDs, ain't no cow AIDS. So we line up. I bust in her, then my friend Buck Lee come up behind me. It's his turn. He bust in her, too. We just live filling her up. Right in cow pork. And I'll tell you the next day they come out and milk that cow and a little bit of there'd be a little bit of a not just milk coming out of two holes if you know what I'm saying it's a little vulgar but it is what it is. Thank you to it's, Sally. This is falling off the rails brother. It's fine. Okay then let's you rate my one accent that I think is fantastic. Okay. I have an accent that I think shines above them all. <laughs> That, of course, I'm talking about uh, the good old boys. You know what I'm saying? You ever been down south, Jack? You ever been down to Georgia about them, about them times now? Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually lived in Mississippi for a while. Oh, oh. Little good old, oh, you're a good old boy from the south. Personally, my favorite is Dark Nathaniel Klansman, where he, he buries bodies. You know? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> that, I, that was probably right. your shining moment. I man. tell you what, man. Sometimes I sit out here on the porch and I get to thinking. Dark thoughts, you know. <laughs> Sometimes out here there's nothing to do but think. Sometimes the storms roll in, keep you bound to your house for a week two on end. The waters, they fall, the rivers, they rise up. Boy. And I tell you what, man, I tell you, some of them rivers rise up, some of them bodies rise up too. Ain't nothing I'm proud of, but I'll tell you what, boy. Got a couple of fuck, got a couple of things under my floorboard when them rivers rise i get a little anxious when it rains because dark secrets come out when the tide goes up you ever i definitely s- think the pitch is uh, your uh, friend uh, 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 you ever you ever sit on the porch and see the country light up by the lightning light make you think about all this here is it god who put us all here no someone much darker than that What is God? It's a joke. God won't put me here on this hill on earth. I tell you what, (laughs) I grew up, but I grew up (laughs) with my good old friend, Jeremiah. (laughs) Me and Jeremiah used to be real close, like we used to run through the field. (laughs) We used to. We used to shoot at deer in the in the field, like 
One day, Jeremiah come home to me. We were close friends, real close. Jeremiah, one day he come home, he said, I kissed your sister. I wasn't too kind about that, because I'll tell you what, man, I've been kissing my sister. <laughs> What's your argument? <laughs> That's my sister, and anyone gonna be reprocreating with her, Jeremiah, that's gonna be me. <laughs> so I took Jeremiah out back, told him we were gonna sleep some sweet tea, and I whispered in his ear, Jeremiah, <laughs> cross the line this time, big brother. And I did something I regret, I'm not proud to say it, but I put my hands on his neck wow should the light left his his eyes the last breath exited his mouth as i looked on his lifeless body i realized what i had done but there was no going back at this point i could see I could tell there was no run going back at this point. Saw the clouds rolling in across the field. It was coming in ready for some rain. But I thought if I got to live a good life here for my sister, I got to get rid of this body. She going to wonder where Jeremiah went. He's a good friend. He'd been around for a long time. People be asking questions. I got to make sure that body get good and good gone. So did me a trench down up in the fields, real deep, talking... I took the tractor, the John Deere. <laughs> I took my papa's, I took my daddy's John Deere, and I start digging. And I start digging. And most by most people's calculation, they say about six feet enough, but I kept digging. <laughs> and maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't I was digging to hide the body. Maybe I was digging my own shame, trying to hide it. Don't have to ever face it again. I tell you that John Deere went about deep as, went about as deep as my shame down to the devil himself. And when I put Jeremiah's corpse, I rolled it right in there. The devil lick his ass so deep. <laughs> and he did, I swear to God. As I filled in that ditch with my good friend Jeremiah, I said... Oh, this gone. Never gonna be the same around here. Went home, the rain started to pour, the lightning hit the fields like a... Like a shock from God. Could see the trees shaking out there in the field. I'd like to say that was the last time I took a man's life, but it was only the first. Oh Turned out I had an appetite for <laughs> people sending people out down to a real deep grave. Something in me, there's some kind of darkness, a hole in me, couldn't be filled by nothing else. And I wasn't this kind of man, I wasn't kind of, I wasn't kind of no murderer, but it was a hole, a deep hole inside of me, couldn't be filled up no other kind of way. Started with Jeremiah. Turned out the next one was Jim Bob. Jim Bob. I don't like to talk about Jim Bob hurt not. If he it hurt too bad. Jim Bob a good man. But I tell you, man, something happened when them light just switch off behind my eyes and I see Jim Bob and I just think this man belong in the dirt down with the devil himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you I met Jim Bob's jazz. <laughs> I met Jim Bob one day, a hot, humid summer day out there in the fields. We was picking, we was picking uh, all the crops, the corn was getting ready for harvest. Huh? It was, a, it was a tough harvest season, you know, the the disease came, ate most of our crops. Hard time for us farmer type. But come around Jim Bob, coming around saying, hey, 
you boys look thirsty. You boys look like you're going to have some kind of drink to hydrate. I did one. I was thirsty. That ain't no truth about that. But I was thirsty for something else. He didn't want to know the truth, and I didn't want to face it either. I'd already taken one man's life. I was about to take another. Took <laughs> I took Jim Bob into my house while we had ourselves some of them iced tea. Something just woke in me. He was a good man, a good Christian boy. I gave him that iced tea. I watched the cubes swirl around his glass like the last embers of his life. This great flame that was Jim Bob about to be flickered, about to flicker to the end. I buy Jim Bob inside. <laughs> I buy Jim Bob back to my house. Tell him to sit down, watch the telly. And I just stand behind him and watch. I knew him. It's man's last moment here on this earth. He didn't even see you coming. <sighs> I hate to think about Jim Bob. What I did to him wasn't right. But I'll tell you since you ask. <laughs> Sat down right next to him. I put a little bit of a sedative in his iced tea, you know, the kind that just make you sleep nice and peaceful. Well, he drank his tea, boy, I tell you what. Passed right there on the couch, went to sleep sweet like an angel. He looked so peaceful when he slept like that the last time he'd ever sleep, I tell you, man. What is the difference between death and sleep, I wonder? As I sat there looking at Jim uh, Bob taking a nice little sleep there. Because what I tell you, when I took that knife and dug it into his side, I tell you, he didn't wake up. He just kept on sleeping. And I wondered to myself, what is the difference? I just took me a life, and yet this man couldn't even wake up to face me in the eyes. I tell you, Jim Bob was a good man around the community. His family couldn't know what was going on. His mama come around talk about, hey, you seen Jim Bob? I say, I ain't seen Jim Bob around here. You know I ain't seen Jim Bob in ages. Got it. We was close. Got it. All right. That was very good. Thank you so much. And this show will premiere next Thursday. So, yeah, uh, Jack, did, what did you think about my accent? I think you have another career as an A&E documentary. <laughs> uh, voice over <laughs> person, for sure. I tell you what, man, there was a storm in mm -hmm. Alabama because two gay boys kissed. Yeah. Sometimes I like to look out the window when I see them storms coming and I touch myself. This is the blood of God. I touch myself because I, I want to praise God. Oh, his power, all his might. He's always with me. He's always in me. It ain't gay if I fuck God. Because God is everybody. And he's nobody. And so as I see Katrina come rolling up, I come down my window glass. I got a nice beachfront property in Florida. Came on my window glass there. Wasn't the first time either. Window glass? Semen tastes good. Mmm. Semen day is good. All right, whatever.